and always a reminder for myself and abdukul ajisa da'ifu miskinu zalim jahal and but for the grace of Allah that we are in existence. Alhamdulillah wow. I think Surat Ar-Rahman Rabbul Mashariq wal Maqarib Surat Ar-Rahman what verse in Surat Ar-Rahman Hajj Shahid inshaAllah let's go into the flat earth that somebody many emails have come in to the question of the flat earth inshaAllah and let's go into the reality inshaAllah. Surat Ar-Rahman Which verse you, did you find? Here we go, 17 inshaAllah. You can start by 16 and then go to 18 but it's verse 17 Surah Ar-Rahman inshaAllah, Surah Ar-Rahman 5-5-1-16, to 18 inshaAllah, Surah 55. Sixteen to eighteen shaykhs. <laughs> InshaAllah the people keep coming and saying, is the earth flat? And this was a, an, a very old understanding and with all this technology that has come out, how the fitna of Dajjal puts so much disinformation and confuse people like warfare that the first step of war is psychological and whom holds an upper hand in psychological warfare can control what's happening in the event. And this is from teachings of Prophet means that your first hit on somebody is psychological. And these are all the times of great deceit that when someone comes to say the earth is flat and the horizon and all the, these things that they put out is to make the person to question everything, truth and falsehood. Make the truth to be false and every false to be true. And these are the difficulties of deceit and the days of deceit. Alhamdulillah Allah gave us Islam 
and the love of Sayyidina Muhammad like immense shining light. Wherever you bring Islam and Holy Qur'an and the love of Sayyidina Muhammad it's a torch, Siraj and Muniran. The Prophet is a torch of light and guidance that wherever you bring Sayyidina Sirat al Mustaqeem this torch and light illuminate every type of darkness and deceit. And deceit can't operate in the presence of light. That when Allah giving us through Holy Qur'an, Rabbul Mashriq wa Maqrib that giving for us on our journey, I am the Lord of the rising sun. We don't have east and west, these are western words. Mashriq means I am the Lord of the rising sun and I am the Lord of Maqrib. So that you look forward, the sun that's rising, my lordship and power here. And then when you follow the sun and its course goes behind you, I am the Lord, my power, my izzah upon the sun that is setting behind you. So it means He's giving us now Allah a course and a direction that face that which is rising, you move onto that horizon and you begin to see the course of the sun is moving. Then Allah gives us in Surah Ar-Rahman, Mashariq wal Maqarib. I am the Lord of the two rising suns and the two setting. Why? To show us that this is a circle. It's not an exact circle but it's 360 degrees. And that when you move in Allah's way that at every moment there's a sunrise. Because of the earth being a sphere and a, and, a, and a circle that as you move for you is a sun and it's moving but the earth is also moving. So if you move in that direction and the earth is moving away again you enter into a new area there's going to be a sunrise because if you're moving fast towards the sunrise like a plane, some days you gain a day and lose a day. But as you're moving towards this sunrise Allah just says, as you reach that horizon you will see another sunrise. So, I am the Lord of two sunrise and if you move again you'll see another sunrise. Means that every moment the sun is rising upon this earth and at every moment the sun is setting upon this earth. The perfection of salah is that at every moment in these five sections there's a Salatul Fajr on this earth. There's a Salatul Asr on this, the Salatul Zor upon this earth, right? If we're praying Fajr now, two hours away they're coming into their sunrise. They're going to be paying Fajr, four hours from them away for example they'll be paying Fajr because the earth is moving and it's a circle and at every moment somebody is praying Fajr upon this earth. At every moment somebody is praying Salatul Zuhr upon this earth, at every moment somebody is praying Salatul Asr upon this earth and at every moment there's a maqrib in which the sun is setting and the illumination of the moon is now rising. So it means these are immense realities that the fitna comes out to take away from something much greater and that's the secret of the circle. That every energy when it loses its mass it becomes a circle. And the holiness of the circle and the reality of ourselves that Allah wants us to understand from the reality of a circle. Because the circle it's a nuqt. So we say all Qur'an, all Holy Qur'an is in 30 juz its power. For us just to even understand the power of Holy Qur'an and 30 juz. This power of 30 juz can be found in seven verses of Surah Fatiha. All secrets, all Ayatul Kareem, every healing, 
everything you can understand from Holy Qur'an, if Allah gives a servant the secret of that understanding, they'll find all the realities of Holy Qur'an in Surah Fatiha. All of the secrets of Surah Al-Fatiha, that's why if you re recite Surah Al-Fatiha seven times you have the ajr of reading the whole of Qur'an because of the strength and the power of what it contains. And when we recite Surah Al-Fatiha we say, Basira Surah Al-Fatiha that I may not know the secret but my shaykhs know the secret. I'm asking by the secret of what you have bestowed in Surah Al-Fatiha Ya Rabbi grant me my du'a, take away my sadness, take away my, my depression, take away my anxiety. Dress me from lights, bless me from lights. That's why every event, every du'a, everything that we do, we recite the Sira Surat al Fatiha. Shaykh Taghastani, Sultan al Awliya said, It's enough for you to recite Fatiha and everything, and everyone will be healed, and every difficulty will be taken away. And then the ulama, Woo, what's that talking? What are you talking about? Because they didn't understand that all the Qur'an is in Surah Fatiha. When they say, Bismillahir Rahmanir Raheem, every reality of Bismillahir Rahmanir Raheem is now dressing that servant saying that, that shaykh who says that. Walhamdulillahi Rabbil Alameen is being dressed by all the realities of what Allah, Allah created from Alhamdulillah and gave the title of a Rabbil Alameen that is created to make hamd of Allah Rahmatan lil Alameen. And his rububiyya and lordship is supreme. All these realities in Fatiha, all of Surat Al Fatiha in Bismillahir Rahmanir Raheem, all of Bismillahir Rahmanir Raheem in Ba. So, Ulul Bab, they are the servants of the Ba, and Allah give them the secret of the Ba within their heart. They are the servants of that reality. And that ba and the be has a note under it and all the power of that ba is in the reality of that note, that dot. So then we begin to understand now the opening, nukta, oh what's our, our, our knot on the nukt, nukt, oh, we have a knot on the nukt. एक नुक्ते विच गल मुक दिए 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 हर नुक्ता छोड़ हिसाबानु छड़ दो जख गौर अजाबानु कर पंद कुफर दे अबाबानु कर साफ दिले दे अखाबानु गल ऐसे घर विच डुक दिए एक नुक्ते विच गल मुक 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 दिए yeah. MashaAllah, the power and the reality of everything is an understanding of this nuqt. So then the marifa is that when you draw close to something, marifa is that your way, ma'arif is Allah bring you closer to the reality so that you witness it, you understand it, Allah put you in the ocean of that. So what only I understood from a nukht? A nukht, if you expand the nukht it opens the reality of a circle. And all this creation, its power and reality is in the nukht. And if you enter into the reality of this creation Allah expands it. So it means all our creation. Allah collapse it back to a nuqt and we cease to exist like dust, like the one particle of sand that ceased to exist anymore. How Allah can make everything small 
or he can make it infinitely expanding. Yeah, it's amazing, <laughs> it's unimaginable. That nuqt, when Allah expands it, now you see it opening up as a circle. So this 360 degrees is immensely important. 360 idols at the Kaaba, 360 lataifs of insan because insan represents that circle. Those were Islamic haqqaiqs that when you put the insan in the circle of a, a human being, you put a figure of a human being inside the circle of creation, this was an immense reality that they stole from Islam and put it as Leonardo da Vinci. He was a painter, he didn't know anything. They were stealing from Andalusia all the Islamic knowledge because for them the Pope had forbidden knowledge and the writing of knowledge, the conveyance of knowledge. And by controlling Latin they didn't even allow the propagation of knowledge. They were studying from the Sufis and coming back into the West and saying it was from them. But the haqqaiq of the circle is the secret of creation and the opening and expanding of creation. So when they want to expand Allah want to expand creation, this circumference expands and the center it remains the same because when they look at the nuqt, the nuqt stays in the center and only when you magnify it the circumference expands, there's still a nuqt and that was for us to understand that there is always a Divinely Presence. And no matter how big this circle becomes, there's always only one center of power. And that center of power controls every point upon the circumference. If there were two center powers, they would be fighting and they would break that reality. That proves the oceans of oneness, that proves the oceans of tawheed. Because La ilaha illallah is the power that whole circle is Muhammadun Rasulullah That one nuqt in the center is the place in which Allah brings His Divinely power. That's why He says, I'm not on heaven, I'm not on earth but I'm in the heart of that center. I'm not on the circumference, why well, Allah would be on the circumference of the circle. And I'm not in the center of the circle, I'm the power of that center. And I'm closer to you than a jugular vein, that's why then awliya write the center and they put a radius all the way to the circumference. And that Allah saying that, I am closer to you than your jugular vein means that every radius touches every point on the circumference from the Divinely Presence of the center. And my reach to all creation is equal because every radius is equal on a circle. You know the, the line from the center to the circumference is not different, it's all equal points. And that circle Allah can make it infinitely larger, the universe we have no understanding how large Allah made that. But it's still all one center with a radius reaching to its infinite expansion. It doesn't matter for Allah how big He makes it. That becomes the whole tariqah. Means the knowledges of tariqah, ilmu shariya is the knowledge of the circumference. Means this whole circle of creation, shariya is the Divine law on how it's going to operate. And nobody can change that law but Allah It is, it's not just for, for Muslims but Allah's shariya means how Allah governs the entire universe and creation is Allah Sharia because there's only one authority, there's only one creator, there's only one God and His law is running everything. No matter how much the people of deceit, Jinan and Shayateen and whoever else want to pretend like they have power and lordship, they only have power within Allah's power. So means then it's the knowledge of 
the circumference is shari'ah. What do we have after ilm sharia ilm tariqah So knowledge is that the shaykhs can convey is then the knowledge of the tariqah means as soon as Allah inspires within them their lives, don't be somebody on the circumference. I want you to make a life towards the center, come to my Divinely Presence. As soon as they step on the radius and they say, Ya Rabbi I want to leave and it's Allah giving their heart because otherwise they would be heedless. I want to leave just the worldly understanding. I don't want to live a life by my head, I want to live a life by my heart. Allah grants to them, come to the knowledges of tariqah which we described the night before is taqamu fi tariqah. Keep firm and the knowledge of tariqah means now is the knowledge of the path. Then as you step on this radius coming into the Divine the Presence, this is the knowledges of marifa. Because every knowledge of marifa is directing you to the secrets of the center, what's happening in the center, what are the realities inside that center. So ilmu tariqa, ilmu marifa, sharia, tariqa, marifa and haqiqa. And every reality that you draw closer to that center is the haqqaiq and reality, these are all the haqiqat al-Muhammadiyya. So that's when we say secrets, 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 all the videos say secrets because these are all the haqqaiqs. This is not knowledges of the outer circumference, outer circumference of, of how the dunya is supposed to operate. These are the knowledges of that radius and these are connected to the heart of Sayyidina Muhammad from Warith al-Muhammadiyya, the inheritors of Sayyidina Muhammad as a result their radius is illuminated because their radius is in that center of power and every knowledge that is coming to them is to hit and bring people close. So as they come onto the knowledges of tariqah then their knowledges are astounding knowledges of tariqah. And as they step closer they're dressed with all of these marifa, all these realities of the center. All these realities are immense haqqaiqs and, and truths and those haqqaiqs when they dress the soul are immensely powerful all the way to azimah and the and immense realities of the Divinely Presence. As they draw closer and closer and closer to that center what happens? That when you get closer to the center you become one whom knows all the points of the circumference. And that's what we call ulum al awwaleen wa akhireen because if your soul is, is operating from the center, Allah bestow upon you all knowledges from beginning to the end. Why? Because the center controls all the knowledges of all the points on the circumference. It has access to all the radiuses, has access to all the prophets, to all the souls, to all these connections. So our life was to move towards the center, to be dressed by these realities, blessed by these realities and the holiness of the, of the circle. That's why all of the tariqah and its gatherings and all these uloom and their knowledges are represented by circles. The lataifs are, are circles of these realities, how to emanate within that reality. And that from the center every uloom and knowledge is coming out. So that's why it's so significant in all the tariqahs, that's why we stand and we do zikr in a circle. When we give our salams we form a circle. It was a representation of the Divine, the Presence that Allah wants us to know, don't ever think that you're not something connected, that you're not operating in your own orbit, you're just a point on My circumference. And Allah loved this creation and gave them a belly button so that they would understand, you know this stomach of yours like a tube, you are connected to my Divinely Presence. And Allah gave us that symbol to remember not to be heedless, don't think you're operating in your own circle, you're just a point in my circle of realities and that without that 
lifeline without that reality reaching to you, you cease to exist. So alhamdulillah that Allah gave us this immense realities and the immense illumination of Holy Qur'an and the heart of Sayyidina Muhammad and immense blessings of awliyaullah and the heart of Sayyidina Mahdi to dispel these, these doubts because of the haqqaiq. Means these doubts and fitnas are coming from the circumference. So the people of the center they're going to come to you with truth. The doubt comes and the fitna comes from the circumference, hey we're flat. Your understanding is flat and your mind is flat and your heart is dead. The people of the center, that circle has many truths, forget about just the earth, it's the truth of energy. That when you lose your mass, why you see orbs everywhere? You take a camera, it picks up all the jinan, the jinns in every picture, 10,000 circles everywhere. Why? Because they're energy without a mass. Any energy without a mass becomes a circle, becomes that reality of a note and becomes the secret of that note. So from the haqqaiq of the center it shoots out, no, no we're talking about, the circle is, is very holy its reality. It's the secret of that nuh and then when Allah expands that circle He can infinitely expand and then He can expand it again and then He can expand it again but the center is always one. He can send out a radius, He can send out a circumference again and then send out another circumference but the center is always one. It shows the, the wahid and the ahadi of Allah that there's nothing like unto Allah and that Allah's power and qudra is emanating from that reality and that our whole life is to return back to that reality. And that's why when Allah causes death so that you lose your circumference. Death is the great annihilator that comes to make people to lose their clinging on to the circumference and what happens then with the energy that their body was occupying? it immediately traverses the radius coming into the center. That becomes their Siratul Mustaqeem. Why then people are, are, are frightened? Allah will cool them. Why there's going to be a cool from the center come? That radius is not easy to walk. All of what people are doing over years of taking their tariqah, Taking their marifah, taking their haqqaiqs, taking all their pounding, crushing, testing, everything that coming to them, that's their Siratul Mustaqeem like a blade, they walk on a blade of difficulty that comes to continuously keep slicing them, dicing them, putting them through difficulty. Anyone who been in tariqah knows how much difficulty it is to walk the path. That is the path, that path and that radius is called Siratul Mustaqeem. That's the name of Sayyidina Muhammad Sayyidina Siratul Mustaqeem. The path, the tariq is to take a path towards the heart of Sayyidina Muhammad He is our our radius. So means that all these difficulties then Allah describes Yawmul Mashar because they didn't take it. That you're going to face one day when the center calls you, when your circumference collapses, your dunya collapses, your body is no longer. Well this energy it can't stay on the circumference, it has to now move. It has to come and pass the radius because it has to go towards the center. It has to reach back to where it came from. It came from the center for an experience on the circumference and when the mass of it dies it goes back into the center. So no, we are not flat. These are all immense realities for the heart and, and every illumination that Allah want to grant to that. Now, they said even Mawlana Shaykh described, no, no, and the earth is not even what they describe because this world of deceit that the Arabian desert and the Kaaba is above the equator. 
because all fitna is below the equator. So because they didn't want to show the continent of Africa as supreme because the map is made by very white people who wanted to show their supremacy. So they even put deceit onto the globe because the globe is, is a circle. If Kaaba is above and they say, no, 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 we, we don't want Africa and Kaaba, we want all these you know people in Africa and, and, and those Muhammadans, let's flip the globe like this <laughs> and they put themselves on top. And they made their countries that they want bigger. So you Google, what does a real globe look like? And imagine the amount of deceit that they changed all the shapes of these continents to show which ones they were bigger. They made all the, the, the European continents to be big because we're European and the continents with other coloured people and different people, we made their continents to be small. We put the ones we don't like on the bottom and we put our continent on top. All that deceit and they still do it with their satellites and their images and every picture they put out, they have an agreed upon image of what the map will look like and it changes it. But that's not the image of the map. When they see the image of the map really when it's not filtered and it's coming from space, the continents are completely different sizes. African continent is immense in its size and they don't want to show that. European continents are minute and tiny but they want to show their supremacy so they make their continents big. So that's the deceit on the actual dunya globe. Forget about its understanding and its realities and all that it represents. The earth represents the understanding of men and understands and sun. The moon represents awliyaullah and the sun represents Sayyidina Muhammad Divinely light that Allah is shining upon him, uh, humanity. And the earth and insan they are in need. They need the sun that make them to be rushed, to make them to be ripened, to make them to be sweetened. At the same time Allah made them to be in need of the moon. We said before that moonlight is what grows the plants. They grow at night by the moonlight. The moon has an immense effect on earth. So Allah said, what do you think about then these awliya and these saints? By the light that they reflect from the sun that you don't see, they make things grow upon the earth, they illuminate the souls of people, they send lights and knowledges to make humanity to be raised. As a result and when the sun comes, it comes to make them to be rushed and to be sweetened. So the earth, the sun and the moon are all just examples of our spirituality and our reality in which Allah says, you are in need because why talk about one when Allah says, I'll talk about the whole of you because all of you are on earth. Don't you and the earth, don't you make tawaf? Don't you make hajj? You say, yes we do, we actually are, we are forced to make a tawaf around the sun. You want it, you don't want it, Allah didn't care. That's why Allah says, they planned but I already planned better. You're making hajj around the light of the sun which is a Muhammadan reality and Allah is in the heart of that reality. You're being nourished by awliya, you like it, you don't? Don't you need the moonlight? You know people become crazy on a full moon, why? Same reason they become crazy around shaykhs, they become the worst character, they're good to all all non-believers all their life. As soon as they come in the presence of a shaykh they're cursing, yelling, screaming. Because the demonic lights are affected by the shaykh. They go crazy around the shaykh, they go crazy around the videos and the, and, the, and the talks. Why? Because it's like the full moon. What happens on a full moon? Ask any police and you'll see all the crimes that are, are increasing. Ask any doctor all the ERs are filled. Why? Because the light that's coming from the sun is coming in full force reflection upon the earth. That light burns shayateen, make them to go crazy. If the light of the moon can do that, imagine what the light of Walakal karana bani Adam, the one whom Allah made that person from his hands 
and blew from his nafas into their soul. What kind of great creation is that that Allah dressed and blessed with all that details, I, I made you from my hands means what type of, of nazar I put upon you to make you and I blew into you of my nafas. Allah didn't describe that for the moon. So they show you on the horizon, look at the azimat of this moon, look at all the realities that this moon has. But the true magnificence is when what Allah has put into insan because of His love for that creation and the secret that they carry. InshaAllah give us more and more understanding of these realities. Wa hurmati Muhammad al-Mustafa wa basira Surat al-Fatiha.